Hello Saints and uh, today we're going to be studying the first dispensation. Uh, the last video about the seven dispensations was just an introduction over the overall uh, God's program over seven dispensations. So today we're going to be getting into the specifics of the seven dispensations and what we're going to be looking at is the first dispensation, okay? So um, now in the uh, next seven videos, uh, like I said, we're going to be going over all the dispensations so we can better understand how God uses different programs at different times to deal with man during different parts of the 7,000 year uh, plan that he has for humanity. Now a quick review of what the seven dispensations are, are the, f the first one is innocence, conscience, human government, promise, law, grace, and kingdom. And I left those in the description box for you, okay? So you have a list of all seven. Now, so we start with the first dispensation, innocence. And the period in between, the, the creation to the fall of Adam and Eve. Or, you know, God assigns Adam to manage this administration. He gives Adam a wife, a helper to oversee God's creation. They had just one rule to follow, obey God. And look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now we see more of the responsibilities in Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So the age of innocence starts with Adam and Eve with their falls so there uh, these are the responsibilities now let's look at where they failed in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 through 6 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God had said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die for God know, doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall become as gods knowing good and evil and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat now let's look at uh, at what happened the result of failing to obey God and God's judgment upon them in Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 through 19 and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him where art thou and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself and he said who told thee that thou wast naked? 
Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all of the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. But even though they failed, and now God has to judge them, he tells them about his grace, how he's going to free them from the punishment resulting from the damage that they've done here. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. We just read it, but let's take a look at it again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now here in verse 15, we see a cryptic message of how God would save mankind. One day his son would be born into the world, God in the flesh, walking among mankind, and would one day be crucified and would rise from death to pay in full for what Adam and Eve had done in the garden. So a quick review of God's dispensation of innocence. God created the first two people, Adam and Eve, to live in harmony with him in the garden without sin. They were perfect in nature and in appearance. Something interesting I'd like to uh, interject here is I believe their appearance, Adam and Eve, were like probably bright and shining beings, okay? They were clothed in righteousness. Uh, their clothing was literally light. And when they fell from sin, that light went away. And at that point, they could see their bodies, their flesh, and that's when they realized they were naked. And they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves and attempt at creating uh, the first religion through works. Okay. Anyhow, the point is, I think they were clothed in bright light and uh, the light of God's God covering them and hiding their flesh, let's say. Okay. So uh, moving on. Continuing on with the an overview of the age of innocence in Genesis, uh, let's see, Genesis 1 and 3, we read of God's creating the first people, God, uh, Adam and Eve, to live in league and in, and in harmony with him in the Garden of Eden. Okay, though having no sin, we see in Genesis 1, Adam and Eve did possess free will, the ability to procreate and an eternal soul. They were tasked with working the garden and also had a face-to-face -face relationship with God who walked in the garden with them. When Adam and Eve chose to disobey God, they introduced sin and death into the world. We read in Romans chapter 5 verses, uh, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Ever since Adam and Eve Ever since they fell from grace, their sin, their debt, has been passed down and inherited by all mankind born to this day. Their, in, their innocence was lost, okay? God announced the consequences to their choice. Then 
he set a pattern of extending mercy by sacrificing a, an innocent animal and this animal's blood was shed to provide cloth, clothing for Adam and Eve which God tailored uh, for them by himself okay we see this requirement of blood sacrifice for atonement all throughout the Bible for example in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 and almost all things all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of the blood is no remission so in the dispensation of innocence God gave people responsibility they failed to meet his requirement they suffered judgment then God provided grace and a hope for the future in Genesis 3 15 the prophecies uh, of was Jesus coming as the ultimate Redeemer Jesus completely innocent okay would die to redeem mankind for those who believed in him so Jesus is described as being the last Adam and the last atonement for sin in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul the last Adam was made a quickening spirit okay so this concludes our study of the dispensation of innocence and in our next video we'll be moving on to the second dispensation that's called the dispensation of conscience thanks for studying with me saints and i'll see you on the next video